This is my third video on explaining the Perceptron and how it works. In this video I'm going to be showing you my Java implementation. It's a nice and simple Java implementation, easy to understand and easy to modify according to your uh, uh, needs. Now for the implementation, just a quick word that we will have three variables, x, y and z, so these are our features, numerical data, and we'll have 100 instances. Each instance will belong to either class 1 or 0, so we only have two classes. And I've written the code in such a way that it actually randomly generates 50 points of class 0 and randomly generates 50 other points of class 1, so we'll have uh, overall 100 points. Some, it's a common practice to, of course, read input values from imp from data sets from text files you know you can do that in your code if you want you can you know download the code and modify it by the way just find my uh, personal web page just google my name or go to my web page on uh, Brunel University's website and go to my tutorials page there you will find the Java code now we start with random values for the weights and bias as we mentioned in the previous two videos we loop through the instances and update the weights and bias the process involves computing local and global error will the local error now is the uh, difference between the predicted and the actual values and the global error is just the summation of the squared error and then we'll find the root mean square by finding the sum of square differences and uh, dividing by the number of instances we'll come to that and then we continue until a stopping condition is, is satisfied maybe we can stop when the error is zero or we reach um, uh, the maximum number of iterations and by the way the code was originally actually in C written by Richard Knopp so what I've done is I've modified it and converted it into Java code so originally the code was in C I've just copied I've just uh, I'm sorry not copied and pasted it but I modified it uh, so it works with random points and is actually now in Java let's go straight away to our code now the Java code as you can see uh, we import some uh, required packages from Java class Perceptron. The maximum number of iterations is 100. The learning rate is 0.1. Number of instances is uh, 100. And theta now, the threshold that we use to produce the output is 0. And then our main method, we have uh, three arrays of double for the three variables, so x, y, and z, all of size number of instances. And we have an array of outputs which is again of size instances we uh, of size maximum number of instances notice it's integer because it can be either 0 or 1 and now here I have uh, at the bottom I have a method called random number it receives a range and it returns a random number within that range a random number of value double so now I have random number for x y and z for the ith input and we loop 50 times so number of instances over 2 that gives us 50 uh, random points with values x y and z and then we give it um, um, a class of one we just print out there for debugging purposes and then we um, produce randomly produce 50 other points of class zero now I hope that makes sense again you can read these from a text file usually you have your uh, train get a set train get a set you can read them from that data set from a text file you notice now the ranges I've chosen are so non overlap so I know for a fact that these points are separable now we create an array for the weights because we have three inputs then we need four weights the fourth one is for the bias as we explained in the previous two videos and then we need values to compute a local error and the global error the local error is the predicted the difference between predicted value and the actual value the global error we use it to compute the root mean squared error like the summation of the local errors and so on and so forth we need to keep track of the number of iterations we need a variable to compute the output of the current uh, instance so we can compare it to the actual and um, these are just variables for looping uh, through the um, <coughs> through the instances now we initialize the weights so the first one is w0 w1 weights of 0 weights of 1 2 and 3 the first one was mentioned for the first variable for the second variable third variable and this is for the bias to a random number between 0 and 1 these will be of course of uh, w values and then we do a do while this is a typical situation a lot of people ask when they learn do while you know when is a typical situation to use them well this is one situation where you need to loop at least well we need we need to go through data at least one time 
So we just increase the number, we do the while, and our condition now is the global error, as long as the global error is not zero and we've not reached the number of maximum iterations, then we keep looping. And what we do, this is an epoch now where we go through all the instances. We loop through the instances one by one. Notice we initialize global error to zero. And then we compute the output for the current instance. I have a method called calculate output. We pass it the value of theta, the uh, array of weights, and then the, the value, the input values of the current points, so the value of x, y, and z of the current point p. We compute the output or the predicted value or the predicted class, and then we find the local error now, which is the difference between the predicted class and the actual class. So this output here of p, this is the actual class, and this is the predicted class. And then we modify the weights and the bias. Modify the weight. Now w zero w weight weights of zero equals weights of zero plus learning rate times local error times the uh, x input of the p and of the current instance. That's for the the the, fir the first value for the of the weight. The second value of the weight, which is uh, for the y variable or for the second variable or second feature. Again, we update it in the same way. The new value equals the original value plus the learning, learning rate times local error times the value of the variable y of at that point p. We do the same thing for the third weight for the value z and then for the bias. Remember here the uh, value of the input we said is assumed to be 1. And then the global error now is just the sum of the square difference so just for the sum of the squared value of the local error. After that we compute the root mean squared error, we just print it out, print out the number of iterations, uh, number of current iteration and root mean squared error, which is the uh, square root of global error over a number of instances, the square root of the sum of the square differences over the number of instances. We keep looping until, as I mentioned, the value of global error is zero or we reach the maximum number of iterations. After that, we print out the equation now of our, of our plane. It's a plane now because we, could, because we have three inputs. So the weight of 0 times x, weight of 1 times y, weight of z times uh, z, and weight of 3, which is the bias equals 0. So that's the equation. And after that, I actually randomly generate 10 points and then test where, where they belong. So test their class, you know, which side of the line or which, are, which side of the half plane they exist on the side that. Uh, that has class one, class one, or on the side that has class zero. Now I know that the point can be one or zero, or can belong to class one or class zero because the ranges here uh, include the ranges I chose when I uh, produced the random point for the class one and class zero. Now at the bottom here we have the po the method that generates a random number. It takes. Um, uh, a range minimum and uh, maximum values and it just returns a random number of va of, of type double here i just formatted to four point four digits after the decimal point and now this is an important method to understand the calculate method the calculate output it receives a theta the threshold it receives the, the uh, uh, array i'm sorry array of the weights and it receives the input values of the our variables you can uh, modify this method to receive any number of of, um, of variables, you know, the number of variables that you have in your data set. Now, because I know we have three inputs, that's why it receives three inputs, but you can maybe uh, have them in an array. Now, the sum, we compute the weighted sum now. So the sum is x times the first value of the weights, which is w x, let's say w1, x1, y times the second value of the weight, so that's like w2, x2, z times the third value of the weight, so that's like the W3X3 and then we add the bias the last value of the weight, array weights as we mentioned before is the bias and then we compare the sum to our theta is it larger than theta or not that's like an F statement FL statement if the sum is larger than equal theta then return 1 otherwise then return 0 so if that's true the, the points will belong to class 1 otherwise the points will belong to class 0 that's the same method we use here even when we generate these new 10 random points to test our uh, uh, hyperplane. Yes, we pass it, we pass it 
we produce a random value for x, y, and z, and then we send them to the to the method to get the output. I hope this makes sense. Let me compile it and run it in front of you so you can uh, sort of see how it works. So I print down the number of iterations and the uh, root mean squared error for us to see how many times it takes for each set of random points to for each group of random points to find the solution. So we've produced now the 50 random points and it took eight iterations to find a solution and these are uh, this is the equation for our decision boundary for our plane that we're looking for the hyperplane these are the values for the weights the ones that perfectly separate the two classes with the bias and now these are just the, the 10 random points that we spoke to that this point belongs to class 0 this point belongs to class 0 this point belongs to class 0 and then here we have a point that belongs to class 1 you can notice from the values of x y and z if you use your imagination and compare it even to the values we used here that it actually makes sense. Let's run it again. So uh, I'll just run it again for you to see how it actually works. And then we have a point here. This, these are our 10 random points. Some of them belong to class 1, some of them belong to class 0. It took here five, ta five iterations to find a solution. It's quite quick actually. Um, let's, let's have a look. Now it took nine iterations with the equation and with the value. These are just for debugging purposes. Please remember that you can download the code from my personal website and use it in any way you want as long as uh, as a you know as a as a courtesy as a way of courtesy to maybe um, refer uh, use my name or my website as a reference. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.